What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I wanna talk about what makes a great software engineer. This is a question that I think everybody who learns how to code, every software engineer asks themselves at one point in their career, what makes a great software engineer? And it's also something that I think a lot of people have misconceptions about. And so in this video, I wanna break those misconceptions. To be clear, I don't want you to take everything that I say in this video as some sort of ultimate truth. I'm by no means claiming to be an expert in this. Rather, what I want to do is I want to share what I observed working as a software engineer at Google and at Facebook. And Google and Facebook are widely viewed as places that hire some of the best software engineers. They're widely recognized as having some of the greatest software engineers. And so I think that I have some interesting tidbits of knowledge about this to share. But so the first thing that I think is important to realize is that if you think that there's a single thing that you have to do to be a great software engineer, for instance, if you think that in order to be a great software engineer, you have to create some sort of revolutionary piece of software. Maybe you have to create a new programming language or a piece of software that's used by millions of people. That's misguided. Similarly, if you think that there is a single thing that all great software engineers have, that's also misguided. So for instance, if you think that all great software engineers know C++, or all great software engineers are full stack software engineers, they can work in all parts of the stack. If that's sort of the idea that you have, that there is a single thing that every great software engineer has to have in order to be great, that's misguided. Actually, no, there is one thing that every great software engineer does. Every great software engineer prepares for their coding interviews using algoexpert.io, and they use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. But apart from that, there is no other single thing that every great software engineer does. So the point that I'm getting at here is that there is no cookie cutter mold of a great software engineer. There is no formulaic path to becoming a great software engineer. And this was made clear to me when I was at Google and at Facebook and when I started observing their performance review processes. And here, before you start thinking, well, oh, but performance review at big tech companies can be a little bit bureaucratic and there can be unfairness and all that, let's try to put that aside for a second because I'm inclined to agree with that. I wanna talk purely about the, the ideals that these performance review processes strive for. Because if you work at Google and at Facebook, you can read a lot about their performance review processes and you can read about how they assess engineers, on what dimensions they assess, engineers, and I think there's something very interesting about the way Facebook does it, and I'll talk about it in a second. But so at Google, you are assessed, if you're a software engineer, on three dimensions. You are assessed on your leadership, your impact, and your technical complexity. And typically this is assessed in the scope of a project or of multiple projects that you've been working on. Now, the interesting thing here is something that my manager had told me multiple times throughout my couple years at Google. He told me that there is no single distribution of skill or of impressiveness across these three dimensions that makes a software engineer look great in the eyes of Google as a company. In other words, you can think of these three dimensions, right, the leadership, impact, and technical complexity, you can think of them on a graph, sort of like hovering on a graph, or rather on a plane, and you can imagine that some engineers are going to kind of skew towards one dimension or skew towards two dimensions. Others are going to have a nice balance of the dimensions, but the point is there isn't going to be a single distribution of these dimensions or the skill in those dimensions that is going to be common across all engineers. Assessing a Google software engineer and how well they're performing is far too complicated to be formulaic. There are so many different factors that come into play, so many different things that are important to know about 
things related to circumstances, like the project that the software engineer is working on, maybe the period of time during which they're working on that project, the team that they're working on. All of these things are important, and so there is no clear picture of the amount of skill in all of these dimensions that a software engineer should be displaying. You can do well at the performance review, regardless of how you do in these dimensions, and it's kind of all going to depend on your unique situation. And I think here the example at Facebook might actually be more interesting. At Facebook, they have a very interesting process of assessing especially high-level engineers. And here, by the way, my memory might be a little fuzzy because I was only at Facebook for a couple of months, so if there are any Facebook software engineers watching this video, feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm missing some stuff. But as far as I remember, at Facebook, if you were a very high-level engineer, meaning an E8 or E9 engineer, really the cream of the crop, we're talking like world-class engineer at Facebook, Facebook bucketed you in one of multiple categories. These were kind of like unofficial titles, and again, my memory's a little bit fuzzy here, so if there's a Facebook software engineer who wants to chime in the comments, feel free to. But so these titles basically described the type of of engineer that you were. So one of the titles that I vividly remember was the title Coding Machine. So Facebook literally has this title that they call Coding Machine, and this basically describes the software engineer who's extremely good at coding, can pump out a ton of code, can be parachuted onto a team, and solve a really technically complex coding problem, but isn't necessarily some expert in a specific domain, or maybe isn't necessarily a team lead, just someone who loves coding, is very skilled at coding, can pump out a ton of code, and can solve complicated problems with code. And so this is a type of engineer that Facebook recognized at the highest software engineering levels in its organization. The way I see it, that should appease some of you, because I know that there are a lot of people out there, a lot of software engineers, who often complain that they don't want to deal with all of the team management aspects of software engineering, they don't want to have to manage people, all they care about is coding, they love coding, they want to write some code, they want to solve difficult problems with code. But they fear that if they want to go higher up, they're going to have to do all this other stuff. And to some extent, it's true. You might have to jump through a few hoops that involve, you know, working within a team and maybe managing a few people, maybe leading big projects. But the point is, there is a role, there is a place for people, for software engineers who are really good at just pure, unadulterated coding. And Facebook recognizes that. One of the other titles that I think Facebook recognized was something along the lines of Domain Expert, and this was a title reserved for people who were experts in a given domain. So as you can imagine, maybe someone who is an absolute expert in machine learning, or an expert in front engineering, or an expert in distributed systems. And typically I think that this was even more targeted, like for instance, an expert in React, specifically in React, not just front-end engineering. But so that was another unofficial title, and as you can imagine, that's pretty different from the coding machine title. Now, unfortunately, I don't remember the other categories that they had, but one obvious one is the more managerial software engineer, or the more team lead type of software engineer. The software engineer who might be writing less code, but instead who might be gluing together pieces of a project, directing a project, making sure that all of the other software engineers are on track, working on the correct things, and so on and so forth. And as you can imagine, this is a more managerial type of role. Maybe it's not on the management chain, maybe it's still within the software engineering ladder, and here I'm talking specifically about Google and Facebook, but the point is this might be a type of software engineer that is a great software engineer, still super high up, not a domain expert, not a coding machine, but really good at other parts of the software engineering field, like some of the softer skills of software engineering. And this should also appease some of you, because I know that some people out there think, okay, I love software engineering, but I don't think that I am an expert in anything. I'm not the 
best coder. I'm not able to pump out insane amounts of code. I get scared at some of the brilliance that I see in other people in their code, but I have other skills, maybe softer skills. Can I still be a great software engineer? Yes, you can. So you see, my point is that at a company like Facebook, at the very upper echelons of the software engineering ladder, there are all of these different types of software engineers who are unequivocally great, right? If you're E8 or E9, you are, like, great is an understatement. You are an exceptional engineer. There are very few engineers who reach that level, and yet there are all these different types of engineers. Coding machine, domain expert, team lead. There is no single thing that they all have in common. Well, perhaps there are things that they have in common, but there is no single formula that brings you to that. They didn't necessarily all create some revolutionary piece of software. They don't necessarily all know C++ or all know full stack development. They all have their unique roles and skills. The last thing that I'll say here is that this does introduce another question, which is at what level, both literal, if we're talking about Google and Facebook and just figurative, at what level do you become a great software engineer? At what level of skill, even if you consider a coding machine or a domain expert or a team lead, what level of skill you need to be considered great? How big of a project you need to lead to be considered great? How much code do you need to pump out to be considered great? How much of an expert in a given field do you need to be to be great? And here, to be honest, I would say that this is a more philosophical question because this is not unique to software engineering. This is something that you can ask yourself in all sorts of fields, all aspects of life. For instance, in order to be a great entrepreneur, do you have to be Jeff Bezos? Do you have to be Elon Musk? In order to be a great athlete, do you have to be Serena Williams or LeBron James or Ronaldo? I don't know. That's probably up to you to answer that question. I probably can't answer that question for you. I would argue that they're just different levels of greatness. That's a topic for another video. Anyway, I hope that you found this video informative. As always, smash the like button if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one.